I'm interviewing my grand, Colleen Mould, who was an evacuee during the Second World War. Where were you evacuated to? A town called Perrinport in Cornwall. What was it like on the day you were evacuated? Oh, as far as I can remember, it was scary. We were all very sad. I remember my mum had to take myself and my older sister and my younger brother to the school. And then, I don't think we were taken in coaches, I think we walked from uh, St Michael's School in Tilbury Road at East Ham and we had to walk to East Ham Station. And when we got there, there were other schools going as well and the platform was full of children. We all had our labels put into our buttonholes with our names and addresses on and we had our gas masks on. And oh, everybody was crying, all the mums and children were crying and, and the sisters from the school and the teachers was running up and down trying to pacify the children. And it was all very, very sad and very, very bewildering when I look back on it. Where about this guy? Well, I can remember that the journey seemed endless and we never knew where we were going then. And uh, I think it was dark when we arrived and um, all the children, I think I was only 10 years, no, I had my 10th birthday in Cornwall, we went in the summer of 1940, and I had my 10th birthday in the August, and we arrived in the dark, and uh, went to the big village hall, where it was all, all warm and cosy, and they had hot tea and milk and cocoa for all the children, which were, we were all still crying. In fact, it was worse by this time, because we'd been on the train journey, for at least eight hours in those days, it wasn't fast travel like it is now on the steam trains. And um, it was a big hall and there was lots of people and lots of officials and lots of ladies and gentlemen there waiting. And of course it turned out that they were all waiting to choose who they would like to have with the children to take their home to look after them. So we all had to wait about and see what happened. Who did you stay with? Well, we were very lucky because we didn't want to be separated. My mum said to me, whatever you do, she said to my biggest sister rather than me, whatever you do, you've all got to stay together. So of course we cried every time somebody picked my little brother out because he was an angelic little boy and they wanted to take him, but we wouldn't let him go. So eventually this lady came along and she took us three and she took some other children as well from our school and I think there was about eight of us all together. And when they, we eventually got home, it was a beautiful big house in the country. It was just outside the town of Perrinport. And um, it was in its own grounds, and we, we all had a nice room. And the lady had a daughter, her name was Reenie, and I think she must have been about 19 at the time. And they made us all very welcome, and although we were still sad, we still used to cry a lot. And of course, Mum and Dad wondered where we were. They never knew where we were going in those days. They wasn't told until we had to write a letter home. The, sis the sisters at school the next morning gave us all the card and we all had to write on it and post it off home to let them know where we were. And I can remember my granddad, so I've been told since then, my granddad said, oh, my goodness, they've been sent to the other side of the world. Because travelling wasn't like it is today. You didn't go on holidays like all of you do today. How different was it from your childhood? Well, when we before the war actually started, I mean, we used to be at home. We ha we lived in a flat. Uh, it was a large flat with three bedrooms. We wasn't squashed up, and, and, and we were a comfortable family. My dad had his own greengrocer's business, and. Um, but nevertheless, by the time we got to Perrinport in this beautiful big house, well, it was a, it was like living in fairyland, I suppose. It was in a beautiful part of the country. Once we settled down, the lady used to take us on the beach. And we used to have picnics. And um, I can remember walking on the sand with no shoes and all the lovely soft sand being so hot. Um, we had a lovely childhood, really. And of course, we, we didn't have a school of our own. Or all the uh, London children that were evacuated, they shared the schools with all the local children. And it was all very small. And it wasn't only the schools that we shared with. The government in those days used to take over hotels. So some hotels were turned into schools and school halls. And we used to share the children, the local children's school as well. 
but we did have a full day's um, schooling like you do. We used to go to school in the morning and the local children would go in the afternoon and the next week it used to be the other way around, so we had to share the school. How long were you evacuated for? Oh, I was evacuated for almost seven years altogether because I didn't come home till, uh, till after the war. What are some of your childhood memories? Well, I suppose once we settled down in, at Cornwall and, and we realised that this was like our second home because I was one of the lucky ones. My dad's business got bombed and uh, when it did, he and my mum and I had twin brothers and an older brother still at home in London during those days and they came down to Cornwall and we found them a caravan to stay in, this lady knew. And my mum and dad and my younger brothers and my older brother stayed in the caravan but there still wasn't room for us children so we stayed with the lady we were billeted with. That's what it was called to be billeted with somebody, like you stayed with them and they shared their home with you. And uh, my dad came down because his business got bombed and he had to go and work on the aerodrome because in those days you were, the men were either in the army or else they had to do munition work or work for the government. So he worked on an aerodrome so I was a very lucky little girl because we were all down there together and it was a wonderful, wonderful life. How different was it from life today? Oh, so much, much different. I think we were very relaxed and as children we had so much freedom. I mean, we used to go and play on the beach like you might get taken to the park. We were lucky in those days and we could go ourselves without our mum. So we're going on the beach, mum, and off we'd go and we'd spend hours swimming in the pools, in the rock pools, and that's where I learned to swim in the rock pools in Cornwall. And, um, well, it was just a lovely, a lovely childhood. What was shopping like during the war? Well, shopping was a lot different to what it is today. They didn't have Sainsbury's and you didn't go around with a big basket with your mum like you do today because everything was rationed. And I can remember my mum was registered. You had to be registered because you had a, um, a book that allowed you so much food per family. And my mum had all of us children and she had so much allowed to her. And you had to be registered with a shop so that the people in the shop got your rations come through. And you'd get a small amount of butter and cheese and bacon and eggs. And the things that were scarce were bananas. Don't ever remember having bananas. And uh, no sweets and chocolates. They were rationed and you had coupons, but they were still very scarce to get, just the same. So what did you have instead of sweets? Well, I used to eat raw carrots. We was always eating raw carrots. I mean, we didn't even miss the sweets, really, because I, I suppose being that young, we hadn't got around to eating the sweets like children do today. But um, no, we didn't miss the sweets, really. And clothes? Well, that was another thing. It was all make do and mend. Mums in those days and big sisters done a lot of knitting and they used to ha uh, have coats and they used to cut the bottom off the coats and then they'd let in a piece of material from another old coat, the best part of it, and it'd be machined in so that it had a contrast going around the corner of it and then that made it longer and so you had a new coat. It was always make do and mend. Oh, I could tell you so much more but it would take so long. Did you find it hard to make new friends? No, not really because we were with all the children that were evacuated with us from our own schools and then we met all the local children and um, in those days when there was a war on somehow or other everybody were very friendly and everybody was very helpful and I was very lucky I can only remember happiness amongst my childhood days and uh, I had one particular girlfriend and we stayed friends all through our school and through our teens and uh, then when we both got married, my friend Winnie went to uh, a Canada to live. But she came from a big family like I did. And her, all her family were in Cornwall, like mine. And um, her, her eldest sister married a local boy. So she still got all her family in Cornwall. And I still hear from Winnie occasionally, my friend. And I still go back and see her sister in Cornwall. Have you been back to Cornwall since? 
was evacuated. Yes, lots of times. We've been to Cornwall. It's just like a second home meant now. And, and it's a lovely, lovely memories, full of lovely memories. Although they, it was a sad time, although it was a very, very sad time and there was so much unhappiness for a lot of people, I was one of the very fortunate lucky ones. Do you think it's changed much? What, Cornwall or where I stay? Well, no, actually, I don't think it has. No, it hasn't. It still looks just as beautiful. Thank you.